Okay, this is take two. Um, I hope this one is a bit shorter. The last one went for 24 minutes and it's supposed to be about eight. And I also hope that you can't see how bloodshot my eye is because somehow I've just hit myself in the eye with my own microphone. So without further ado, let's get started. Hello everybody, welcome to The Untamed Entrepreneur. My name is Jim Hughes, and today I'm going to try and help you learn how to design a business that energizes you, that makes the most of who you are, that inspires you, and most importantly, allows you to reach your full potential without changing who you are or investing in any more expensive qualifications. So, who am I? Well, I am an international speaker, I am an event host, and I'm a personal and business coach. I have worked with, I actually should say, eight-figure business owners, senior military leaders, world record, world record holders, double Olympic athletes, and loads of people in between. People like this guy who ran his own, or who's now running his own business, who transitioned out of the military a couple of years ago over in the US. He was a former colonel in charge of thousands of people and millions of dollars worth of budget. And now he is running a consulting business. He's written a book. He's now on his way to writing a second book, and we worked together on helping him define who he was and which direction he wanted to head in. And Soprani Consulting, Soprani, Lindsay Soprani runs uh, two businesses over on the East Coast of the US, and she hired me to speak to both of her business uh, businesses on a retreat she ha uh, held towards the end of last year. And I work with her team to uncover their individual personalities, uncover their flow states. Uh, we'll get into that a bit, a little bit more in the uh, later on, and to help them uncover what made them who they were, so they could leverage their gifts and make the most of the environment that they were in. What else am I? Well, I'm a nomad, so I get to do things like that, which is on a sitting on a bench working with a client in Mexico, and I get to do a bit of that and plenty of that, and a fair bit of that. But most importantly, above all else, it's the mission that I'm on that inspires me, and that mission is to help people align themselves with who they truly are and what inspires them so they can lead more fun, more fulfilled lives. I want to help people to wake up every day with excitement and energy, knowing that they're living to their full potential and making a difference in the world. I want to help people become so inspired that by what they do that the lines between work and play become blurred. And in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to describe how and why I know so much about that journey myself, because I'm going to talk about my journey from becoming a disillusioned and unfulfilled business leader to the person I am today, which is a nomadic entrepreneur, absolutely loving what he does, living to his full potential and making the most of who he is. I'm going to be showing you the one thing that prevents people reaching their potential. There is one thing that people ask me, what's the thing I can change the most? What can I tap into most to allow me to reach my full potential? And I'm gonna be talking to you about what that is. And what is that? Well, it's a lack of awareness, a lack of awareness over who you truly are, over what you're best at and what inspires you. You can't tap into your resources unless you know where they are and what they are. But before we do that, I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown as to my journey to get to where I am right now. I was running a business back in Australia. I was a business leader. Uh, we're turning over about $4 million a year. But what did I really want to do? I wanted to travel the world. I wanted to have flexibility and freedom and make plenty more money. No shame in that. I also wanted to live my own dreams. But instead of that, I felt like I was helping somebody else achieve theirs. Most importantly, however, I wanted to be happy. I wanted my natural personality to be celebrated, not muted. And I wanted to reach my potential. And so importantly, I wanted to avoid mediocrity. But I couldn't do that because I was tied to an office. I had to pretend to be somebody else. I wasn't passionate about the service we offered, the people I helped or the industry I was in. I was sleeping in longer. I was leaving earlier and I was caring a lot less in between. And the energy and the positivity that I was known for, that I'd always had such abundance of, was lacking. And I was become really apathetic and forgetting who I was. So thankfully, one fateful morning, I was lying in bed. I'd snoozed about 10 times. My partner left for work. And for some reason, it really hit me. Back in the day, I had been in the office for about two hours before she even got out of bed. And now the roles had completely reversed. 
So thankfully something that something happened that morning for it to make me sit up and notice. And from that day forward, I decided that I wanted to learn everything there was to know about me, what inspires me and how I could design a business and life around those things. What did I do? I immersed myself into every training program, course, book, online course, offline course, qualification I could think of. It consumed $25,000 of my money and 1,300 hours of my time flying all over the world meeting anybody I could think of. It was extremely time consuming and extremely expensive and not very efficient, but at least I ended up with complete clarity over who I was, what inspires me, what I'm best at, and most importantly, the steps I could take right then and there to leverage who I already was, rather than changing who I already was. So how can you do it? Like I just touched on earlier, it is all about awareness. It's about building a life and a business on the correct foundations. Think of the analogy of bamboo. Bamboo doesn't start to grow upwards until it's settled its roots. It beds its roots in for at least a couple of years before it does any growing up. And what that means is it's got the solid foundations. It's got a firm base. It knows it's in the right place. It knows it's, knows it's making decisions based off the right foundations, basically. And as a result, it becomes the fastest growing plant in the entire world. You can grow a business. You can grow a life. 10x as the, as the business people like to say these days, but if you don't know who you truly are and what inspires you and what you're great at, it's like building a skyscraper on marshland. It's not going to last long and it's not going to have stable foundations. So there are three elements to this and I'm going to go through those three, the three things that you can get clarity over that are going to make the biggest difference for you and allow you to run that business and life that truly inspires you and allows you to reach your potential. Number one, I want you to get clarity over who you are and in that I mean your natural personality, your tendencies, your gifts, your talents, your strengths and your weaknesses. The one thing I can do, I would suggest you do, and if we worked one on one, we go way, way more depth than this. But if I've only got about eight minutes, I think, in this whole video. So the one thing I suggest you do if you have minimal time or you want to get started straight away is to uncover what puts you into a state of flow. Now, really, really quick recap. Flow state is the state of mind you're in when you're performing a task or an activity, when you're truly engaged by what you're doing, when you ultimately succeed, when you're stimulated by it and the whole world could go on around you without you realising time flies by, but ultimately you're successful in whatever it is you do and you've got loads and loads of energy at the end. If you can tap into what puts you in a state of flow, if you can think back throughout your life and business, social settings, family settings, work, whatever, sports settings, Find out when you were in this energised and consumed state and then dig into who you were with, what you were doing, what the outcome was, what was the role, what was the environment. And the clearer you can get on that, the clearer you can unpick all of that data that's in that situation and do that multiple times and start to unpick some trends that may exist, things that need to exist in your life to put you into that state. Ultimately, when you're in that state, you're going to add more value, you're going to be happier and you're gonna make a lot more money, and you're gonna be able to reach your potential. So if you can do one thing to uncover who you are is to uncover a flow state and then really, really get granular on what creates those situations. The second thing I suggest you get clarity over is understanding your why, as Simon Sinek likes to say, or your mission or your purpose, whatever words you use, uh, whatever words you wanna use, it's up to you. Um, but this is all about understanding what inspires you. Now, I use this word a lot because I believe there's a fundamental difference between inspiration and motivation. For me, motivation takes energy. Like me going to the gym, I understand the importance of it, I do it, but I have to motivate myself to do it. That takes willpower, which burns calories, and therefore it runs out. It's a finite resource. However, when you're inspired by what you do, inspiration gives you energy. It's a never-ending source. It's a net gain versus a net loss. So rather than finding a business that motivates you, that you feel like you have to drag yourself out of bed for each day just so you could make the money that you feel like you need to, to provide for your family, to do whatever, try and find something that inspires you so you've got that energy every single morning and you don't have those questions anymore as to whether this is for you or not. And the way you can dig into that is try and dig into some emotional events you may have been through in your life, some things that were particularly impactful that impacted the way you think about things that were particularly that made an indelible mark in who you were and underpin a lot of your values 
sometimes people identify that with some topic or conversation that makes their sort of skin get all bristly with excitement or in a negative or a positive way. Some people have been through extreme emotional circumstances like becoming off uh, addictions and leaving the military, being a single mum and trying to run a business. There's some extreme cases, but there's also some more you know, run-of-the-mill cases, I would say. And mine was certainly one of the latter. So don't worry if you don't have an extreme emotional event that you can immediately go to and think, well, that's what inspires me. If you don't have that, don't worry, I didn't. But what inspires me is to help people go through the same journey I went through, that $25,000 and 1,300 hours of my time to unpick who I was and what inspires me. That was the pain that I went through, the experience that I want to help other people avoid, and I'm inspired to do that. So what is that for you? Have a think. Have a think of the favorite conversations you have. What is it you always end up doing when you procrastinate? What kind of cause or charity might you ever contribute to? There's loads of little questions you can ask yourself to try and unpick what your why might be. And then thirdly, I want you to unpick or unravel or uncover who it is you're inspired to serve. Too many business leaders out there provide a service or a product to customers they don't really care about, they have apathy towards. And when there's apathy there, there's a disconnect. If you can tap into your why, into your mission, into that extreme emotional event that you went through, so often the person you're inspired to serve is somebody in that story, whether it's you, somebody you helped. The crucial thing about that is you have, you can resonate with that person on a deep level. You can connect with them. There's immediate trust there. You know the situation they've been through. You can put yourself in their shoes. And all you have to do is communicate your message to your customer and say, this is my life story. This is what I went through. This is the pain I experienced. And they're going to get it. They're going to get you and they're going to know that you get them. So when you've gone through all of those things, when you've narrowed down what you love to do, what you're best at, what you're inspired to do, what gives you the energy and who you want to serve, you're going to be left with so few options as to what the business you want to run actually looks like and how the steps that you need to take to reach your potential. And I want to remind you, this is not about changing who you are. This is not about investing in any more qualifications. This is about tapping into the existing scenarios you already have, the experiences you've already had, the strengths and weaknesses you've already got enabling you to uncover what it is you're best at and then leverage that and mitigate the rest. And I can tell you from experience, I've been through the same thing. I know how you feel. When I started my business, I thought I should invest in an accounting course because I didn't like numbers. I didn't know them. I didn't like spreadsheets. I didn't like backend systems or details. So I thought I should spend my time training in that. Thankfully, I saw the light and I've spent time doubling down on all the other things I'm best at designing a business that relies on the other stuff less and then surrounding myself with people who are in a flow state doing that stuff. So it's about tapping into who you already are and what you already have at your disposal. And then for anybody out there who's wondering if seeking this next 20, 10, 30%, um, whether reaching your full potential and really sticking your neck out on the line is worth it, I implore you to ask yourself this question. What is greater, the cost of trying it or the cost of going to your grave, knowing that you never truly gave it your best shot, knowing that you never lived your potential. And please take heed from a lot of the people who were surveyed on their deathbed. Um, the number one regret for so many of them is over the things they didn't do, not the things they did. So don't let that be you. So what's next? Well, I this is where I invite you to start your journey. And like I say, it took me 25 grand and 1300 hours and a couple of years, but what I've designed is a program. I've boiled all of my lessons down since I started. I've probably spent about 40 grand. I'm still attending events every few months, thousands of dollars in my own training and honing my craft. And I've boiled it down into a one-on-one -on -one training program uh, where I work with you on an immersive level. We have a call every couple of weeks. I drill really, really, really deep and far down into who you are, your belief systems, your values, what you love, your narrative, why you say and do the things you do, what you're amazing at. I've got all of these tools and resources that I use to help you get such clarity over what it is you love to do and helping you reach your full potential. I don't tell you what to do. This is all about you. So I'm asking you questions to help you unpick this. It's not a prescriptive formula. Everybody I work with is different. And because I'm so inspired by the job I do, the service I provide and the people I work with, I only work with a handful of people and I am fully in. I work the same speed as you do. You give me homeworks back, I give you more. You give me homework back, I give you more. And 
all of that time in between the calls is included because for me, it's all about the outcome. It's not about the process. And this is a quick overview of the five steps I take people through. So we've touched on three of them, the identity, the why and the who. They're what I call the foundational steps, the things that are going to allow you to build your life and business on top of. The fourth and the fifth are the what and the how. So once we've narrowed down the options, there's only a certain number of businesses that are available to you, a certain number of tweaks that you can make to your existing business that are going to make the most of all of the things that we've learned. So we're going to narrow that down. We're going to go through those five processes. and We're going to leave you with absolute clarity over what you need to do to design the epic life and business that's going to allow you to reach your full potential. Here's just a couple of uh, recaps of the people I work with. This is Erica. She was a business leader over in the US and she worked with me during her transition to running her own business and designing it truly around who she was. A lot of the work we did was to uncover her brand, was to dig into the reasons why she said and did the things she, she said and did and to then design her business around that. And the clarity she got from that was enormous. I think her husband even said that... Um, the, the time we had together was most impactful on their relationship. So it's not just about your business, it's about your life as well. And then these guys, a world-class performers over in the UK, they're senior, uh, still serving and ex-serving military guys, providing world-class personal training for people. And we helped them when we worked together, we unpicked their why. So I didn't need to work on their brand. I didn't need to work on what they delivered, but it was helping them tap into the why behind everything they did so they could communicate that more effectively in their business and then this lady Heidi is a good example I just wanted to end on it's not always a long process it doesn't always have to take six months or three months sometimes it can be as quick as 30 minutes um, as it was with this lady we got real clarity she'd been working on something for six months with a few other people and we drilled down and made that progress in 30 minutes so I invite you to book a, a free strategy session with me it won't be 30 minutes of sales. I used to hate that when I was going through my journey. I will try and add as much value as I can onto the call. I promise you that. And as I proved with Heidi, it doesn't have to be a sales call at the end of this. If I can add value and leave you with some answers, I will. But I invite you to take that step right now. It's free. It's 30 minutes and it could be the best decision you ever make.